carrier of uh, symbolic messages. This comes most to the fore in the specimens bearing an inscription. In the beginning, coaches were worn by nobility as a habitual symbol of status, while later on the fas fashion spread also to the townspeople, provided they could afford it. Coaches were produced from various materials, the most expensive ones, those made of silver, gilded silver, and particularly gold, with some carrying also precious or semi-precious stones, point to the high social position of the noble nobility, clergy, and prosperous citizens. Silver was much more common than gold, particularly due to its greater values. Which is made of Alexis Prince materials like bronze, tin, and alloys of copper, tin, zinc, and lead, which were often produced in molds, were more accessible, so they spread also among the less affluent social classes. Even though initially its role as a clothes fastener must have been the paramount one. The symbolic potential of the brooch was possibly even greater. Much like rings and crowns, circular brooches had already during the 12th century had a particular symbolic attraction as symbols of eternity, unity, and fidelity. Due to this, and above all, if they also bore an appropriate description, they were convenient medium for vows of love and devotion. There is but a small step from a symbol of fidelity to an object possessing the power of protection of fidelity as well as many other things. This protective function was further reinforced by the choice of the material of which the brooch would be made. In the Middle Ages it was believed that metals, especially precious ones, as well as precious and semi-precious stones, like other biological materials, possess certain beneficial properties for humans. Such beliefs are mentioned in individual sources. The protection may have been further strengthened by certain inscriptions. Such inscriptions were very common and, so it was believed, efficient as much as a spoken word. The inscriptions present on brooches may have been divided into several categories devotional, magical, uh, love inscriptions, and those unintelligible to us. What they all share in common is their undeniable protective role. Another not uncommon feature of inscriptions are misspellings, which may be accidental or Delivered. The study of inscriptions on brooches allows us to observe that during the Middle Ages, the border between the prescribed beliefs within the doctrine of the Church and non and non institutional beliefs was blurred. That is, that all three main things, devotional, magical, and love related, were often interwoven. It therefore comes as no surprise that inscriptions on various materials were copiously used in the Middle Ages for cure and for fighting against spells, as a practice that has remained in certain places to this day. For, in, for instance, <clears throat> the folklore literature abounds with references uh, to the use of magical words and formulas today often incomprehensible to us, written on the paper, leather, canvas, body parts, sewn to the clothes, or worn next to one's body, hidden from view. We shall use uh, the example of the annual brooch discovered in archaeological investigations in a grave buried adjacent to the foundation of the Temple Church in the village Gora near Petrinja in central Croatia. To point out the totality of information we can infer from this type of evidence, provided they come from an archaeological context. This annual brooch has a wide and flat frame made of 
is slightly done in silver with an inscription on the front and geometric ornament on the back. The letters are and the thicker uh, decorative lines are filled with nail. The upper diameter of the brooch is 2.8 centimeters. The front of the brooch bears an inscription consisting of a series of 15 letters. And I believe that uh, inscription is uh, the abbreviated beginning of the Ave Maria prayer, Ave Maria Grazia Plena Dopotus. But rendered in such a way that it was encrypted two times. First, by changing every second letter in the word Dominus. And second, by choosing specific letters in which symmetry was respected. I encountered this relatively similar concept of uh, selecting specific letters on a brooch from Strasbourg, where only every third or towards the end every fifth letter from the beginning of the same prayer was inscribed. In addition to a few anomalies, which nevertheless do not notify the precision of the procedure. Even though it was possible to wear our approach on either side, the total of arms on the pin, as well as the entire workmanship of the pin, nevertheless followed the clue as to which was the more important side. That it was indeed mostly worn that way, incorporated also by the wear of the frame at the contact with the tip of the pin, which is considerably more distinctive on the front and on the back of the brooch. The same word the brooch was made of reveals the social status of its bearer, whose female sex is known to us naturally based on the results of anthropological analysis of the cosmological events from the grave. Our knowledge of the manner in which the brooch was born at the time of at the time of funeral is based on the position of the fine the grave on the chest. The partially coded inscription on the brooch speaks of its apotropaic function, revealing also one of the methods of coding similar inscriptions. Such a concept of inscription, in combination with other technological features, it reveals also that the brooch was made in the territory of France, from which its bearer most probably arrived in Croatia. Based on analogies in combination with the stratification of the site, we can also reach the conclusion that the brooch from Bora was made in the 13th century or possibly at the beginning of the 14th century. Based on all of this, and taking historical sources into consideration, I conclude that the brooch was taken into the grave by a woman of a high social status who arrived in Croatia from France together with the Knights Templar. It is also quite likely that she herself was a member of the Templar Order. Multiple symbolism inferred from inscriptions materials in certain brooch forms, as well as different messages they convey, reflect the rich world view of the medieval man, his belief, hopes, fears, and above all, the desire to influence the circumstance, circumstances surrounding their lives. <coughs> the other different elements of brooches were in all probability also along with its own. Oh, my